En, to, tre, fire. Hi and welcome to another fly tying video on uh, trout flies. Uh, I want to show you I got a lot of uh, uh, caddis flies that I use uh, and this one is actually one of the flies I always have in my box for when we go fishing in the, in the waters in the mountains here in Norway. We got a lot of caddis and um, this is a nice size and I really like the color combination with the caddis pupa green in the back and I got uh, uh, the the medio brown in in in, in the body and I got a palmer hackle and everything and I'm using raw hair actually for this fly uh, and um, the challenging part of this one is uh, you know the hairs are very short but um, it works great and, and and you know just to stack it and everything there are always some techniques to do that and um, yeah I use fly right I, I use fly right a lot and you know when I got this uh, collection of dubbing so I want to use it and it works great and I like the colors. So I'm using number 13, 39 medium brown for the body and caddis pupa green for number 40 for, for the for the egg sec. And for the uh, for the um, palmer hackle I'm, I'm using this cape, this whiting cape. And I've shown you I use this in my lepto flies and I use this for many other flies that I tie for when I tie ants and I use this, uh, this cape and uh, this is a furnace. So if you buy one of these, you got you can tie a lot of flies, different patterns. And uh, inside here, there's an, quite a nice uh, marabou part you can use for small means and for for uh, you know for for other types of flying. I'm gonna show you. So yeah, so I'm using that for the for the for the for the hackle. And hook, I'm actually using caddis curved. This is a Musta Musta C49S, but a caddis curved standard size 8 is this one you can tie this in size 10 too but i, I really like the size 8 it's a, it's a nice size um this is a x1 short so yeah it works great so for thread i'm using unithread 80 the camel color i like it very a lot for these types of flies so yeah so you can use brown or what you ever want so okay so let's start so here we go here's the the fly as you can see it's uh I use some techniques to get the, the wing like this. I, I re really want the fly to have this this angle here because when I fish it and I want this, these fibers, I don't want to cut them off. I want to, to stay there because I want the movement in the water. And this one actually lies pretty deep in the back. That's kind of the idea with the hook that is quite thick, I think. that's that's I, I like that. And, and these fibers are making small vibrations on the water when I pull it in. and. And the head, I like the head because sometimes I like to pull a little bit hard and this one actually does so that it dives a little bit down in the water. And when you, when you stop pulling, this um, row here will, uh, helps the fly to pop up again. So it's, uh, it works very good here in Norway uh, in the, the, the waters in the mountains and the woods. This is a good, great pattern. So uh, it's just a caddis. Uh, yeah, so let's start. I have tied a lot of them. I'm gonna. I've been fishing a lot now, and soon the caddis are coming to our waters, starting to hatch. So yeah. So let's just pinch in the barb. We don't need the barb. I would love to have more barbless hooks, but I just do like this. It works great. So secure the hook in the vise, like that, and we're gonna start off by. Tying our, in our thread, securing it like that. I'm gonna snip off the excess. And now I want this um, egg sec to be pretty long down here, far, far down on the hook. So I'm gonna pass the barb a little bit about there. Yeah, there, and I'm gonna start off start with by tying in the um, tying the the egg sec. And I'm using, as I told you, caddis pupa. And for doing this, I like to dub it two or three times because if you put in too much, you don't. It's 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 difficult to tie it a uh, uh, hard, you know, to tie to make the ball ball uh, hard, so it won't go f fall off when you catch fish on it. So I'm putting in just a f see a, how sparse it is, and I'm I'm dubbing, and I'm going down. I'm gonna dub down 
few millimeters and tightening up the dubbing. And I'm using my finger, I'm taking a turn and I'm actually helping it around. Tightening up, and I'm going up again. If you, too, if you uh, have too much on, you won't be able to make the ball hard, okay? Yeah. So I'm, I'm doing this two or three times, depending on how much I take out. So you see, this is sparse, almost nothing. <laughs> Yeah, so let's make a ball. And I actually want this to be a little bit thicker than the body. That's kind of, if, if we can manage. You see, as, as soon as it gets too much, it's quite difficult to make it nice and hard. And I can see on the camera, I got a fiber there, get off. So, yeah. I'm just gonna tear off the fibers that I will want. Like that, and I'm gonna tie in my hackle. And what I'm looking for is a hackle that that's that's that tips is the same length as the white gap. There you see, touching the gap there. The gap? Oh yeah, you understand. Touching the tip. Yeah. Okay, so tie it in with the with the shiny part or nice 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 side looking, yeah towards you. Tie it in at the side there. Take the thread all the way down to the to the egg sec and then we're gonna dub gonna dub our body. And the and, and, and also here I want a, a pretty compact body. I don't want it too loose. So actually this time I'm gonna dub it almost three times. So I'm taking out small small piece. Okay and we're gonna Start it off, applying it on the thread. I'm going to start here. I'm going to tie up first. And I'm going to use my finger. As you can see, this helps it a lot. Whoops! I need to slow down. I'm getting excited. <laughs> Stop there. And that's very important to have this, this, this space here. Okay. That's very important. We're going to finish off. And I'm going to go back down again. Do not overdo it, okay? Take a small, you see, small, small amount of dubbing and go back down again. And this makes for a good body. If you, if you t put on too much, it will be loose and you know, you don't get that nice caddis, caddis uh, shape or should I say caddis body. So, okay, so go back up again and now we're finished with our caddis body. Okay, and I'm gonna palm it by taking two wraps in the back. I like that. I, oh, and I'm gonna go just a half a millimeter or a millimeter. Oh, I almost broke the hackle, but it's okay. And I'm gonna palm it nice and tight all the way up. I want it to be like this. Okay, you want to make a lot of noise on the water. One turn in the front, cross your thread, secure it. Don't let go, don't let go. <laughs> like that. Just break it off and pull every fiber that's going forwards, pull them back. And now, very important, tie the thread all the way into the body and go one, two, three, or four, or five, or something like that in the front. You need to go a millimeter and a half forwards because we're gonna tie in the, the wing and we're gonna tie a little bit back again, okay? Tie it in the wing and tie some turns back. So we need that space there. Okay, and now we're going to ma manipulate the fibers Okay, because if you tie in a wing there, they're going to stand up like this So we need those guys to go down So one way to do it is just to rub it like that rub 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 But more efficient is actually to heat up your fingers Okay, and have a little bowl of water and just a little drop of water and you can just Like that and you're gonna take your fingers and when it gets warm, you can apply the, the heat to the feathers and move it back and forth and hold it there. And just move it slowly. And it will actually make the fibers this stiff. This is a dry fly cape, you know, the, the hackles are, are very stiff. And I want the stiff fiber in the bottom because I want these fibers to make the small vibrations on the water. You can use a hand cape, but you know, the fibers in a, in a hand cape are not so stiff. And I want these stiff fibers, okay? That's why I'm doing this. So, hit up your fingers. I learned this from my friend Long. 
that ties this uh, fully dressed uh, salmon, salmon flies, flies you see in the guy. He's, he's, he ties some amazing flies. And I've been, been quite lucky to have some in some evenings at my friend's house, uh, Jon Strand, and often he invites Long, uh, Long and me and many others, and we sit there and tie flies. And I saw he was kind of he has this little bowl of water, and he was putting his finger in, and he was doing like this, rubbing his fingers, and he was holding on the feathers. When you know, when you, you take a palmer at a salmon fry, he wants the fibers down, and he heat up his finger, and he holds it like that, and he let go, and the fibers bend. Okay, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of stealing the idea. Just hold it. You see? Oh! <laughs> so this is a nice technique. I learned it from Long. So thank you, Long, my friend. I'll see you soon again. <laughs> okay. So when you're finished, and I want this to stick down, I want it down there. Okay. So just heat up your fingers. I'm talking too much. I'm sorry. I get excited, you know. Heat it up and rub it, rub it, rub it. So we're gonna tie in the row here, okay? Yes. So I'm just gonna take a sip of coffee again. It that wasn't quite warm, but it's okay. <laughs> so as you can see, this is my row here, and this is actually a, uh, uh, some pieces I got from from the first row row I was um, going hunting and and. My friend shot a row and, and I got some pieces of the skin and I was only 16 years old, so it's quite old this one, but um, this is my last piece and um, and as you can see the hairs are very, very, you know, dense, it's it's uh, quite thick, and but the hairs are short, so it could be a little bit difficult to use uh, uh, in the hair stacker, but uh, it works okay, so you just use what you got, but... Uh, here in Norway, row is very common. It's everywhere and everyone is hunting them. So I'm actually starting hunting row this year. So I'm going to get a nice, nice whole skin. So yeah. Okay. So we're going to pull out some fibers and I'm using my right hand. I got my scissor in my hand, right hand, and I'm pulling out a nice bunch. I don't want too much, but it's smart to take out a little bit more that you need because they're going to lose some hair on the way. And I'm, and I'm taking my left hand I'm taking out with my right, moving my left hand over, and I'm going to snip off tight to the skin, okay? Like that. That's why I like to have the scissor in my hand. And uh, I'm just going to open up and I'm going to remove the fluffy part. If you, if you roll those fibers, you're probably going to lose a lot. So I'm not rolling my fingers. I'm just going to do like this and blow on it. Like that, because as I told you, they are they are very short. If you roll too much, you're gonna lose a lot of them. So yeah, and I'm sorry. I'm gonna change hands like that, and I'm gonna put these tips in the, the stacker. Here things can go wrong because if you're a little sweaty on the hands, this will actually not work. But I'll manage. Whoa! Get down there and tap it. So, when you're finished, let's go down here and tie them in. So, what I'm doing, I'm holding this in my left hand and pulling this one out with my right hand because I want the wing to go this way. So, I'm going to pull it out. Let's see if we can manage. Oh, there they are. You can see. So, I can see there are a couple of one of them I don't want, but I'm going to snip, snip them out later. So, now, I'm gonna. they are ready and I'm going to pinch them out with my left hand, just like that. I'm going to make this ready for the next one and I'm going to pull out the long ones and now this is actually too much. I don't want so many fibers. They're hairs. They're actually not fibers but hairs. So there you go. That looks better. So I'm going to work with it a little bit. I'm going to see not too much. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to actually go and tie them in. Yeah. There we go. That's nice. Actually they are a little bit too much. As I told you, I don't I don't want too much because it gets too bulky, I think. So, okay, let's see. We're going to have them a little bit longer than the hook, like that, sticking out just by the hook, hook bend there. And I'm holding there, and I'm going to change hands with my left hand. 
And now that your, your thread is ready, you know. So we're going to go up, pinch the thread, go down, and I'm going to push the fibers on the hook like that. I'm pulling it towards me, the thread. Push, push, and pull. One more time, push it down. You want it to go down and tighten up as you go. Three, push it down. And hold the wing, pull it, push it down, and take a few wraps that way, okay? You see? And go back again. And then before I let go here, I'm going to take these butts and I'm going to snip them off. I'm going to roll them together. I'm actually going to snip them off as good as I can. Just take your time. Be careful not to snip off anything else. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that's perfect. So this is this is kind of a step that could be a little bit, you know, challenging. And if you can see some of these, if you don't want them, if it's too much, you can just break them off or, or snip them off. Okay. So I'm gonna snip off this part. And don't don't worry if you don't get all the fibers because you're gonna dub this and it's gonna just gonna disappear by just by using dubbing. And my cat is coming. Hello. Yeah. Oh sorry. My cat is wondering what I'm doing. So yeah. So get off the fibers you don't want. Like that. Get off. And as you see, this is this this part we're gonna dub it. So yeah. So there, and that's why it's so important to have the little space there. Okay. So I'm actually gonna try to manipulate these fibers a little bit just by using some heat. Like that. And we're gonna dub the rest of the fly. I like that because if you dub up here now, it's gonna help it to lay, to kind of lay down like that. Okay, so we're gonna tie in some more dubbing, and I'm gonna use medium brown, the same as the body. Oh, I got there. Get away. Like that. Take a little bit. Actually, you can leave it like this, but I want the head to be kind of nice and neat because I want to have be able to to pull the fly down this this helps the fly going down so pull back the fibers and do not tighten up just kind of support you me making some kind of a small hat for the fibers <laughs> should, I, should I say that <laughs> you're helping the fibers to kind of get in the right position like this go a little bit back and go forwards and I need a little bit more little bit little more dubbing and that's my caddis fly I got a lot of other caddis flies too but this is I wanted to show you this one this works great in the in the the, the, the waters here in Norway and of course this will work any other place too but I like the look of it and just bring the dubbing Beneath, in, in between these fibers and finish off by just taking a couple of turns and we finish one two three four five so I don't know if I call this I don't I, I just say caddies in Norwegian is called Vårflue and make sure it's nice and neat as you can see this helps the wing to kind of get down yeah so there you go. Make sure you don't get anything in your hookai. Like that. So that's it. And as you can see, these fibers, I want those fibers. They make a lot of noise on the water. And it really gets the trout attention when they are hunting for these for these caddis flies. So yeah. Okay. So there you go. That's my caddis fly. I don't have a name for it. It uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a blend of an attractor and a stimulator and a egg laying and everything. But uh, this works great. So, yeah, 
just call it a caddis. I'm not gonna have any name for it. It's been tied uh, many times before. So there you go. And uh, as you can see, it's a quite short wing. I don't want it uh, to, I want this style here. This style and I want those fibers. So it's gonna sit uh, nice on the top on the water and then when you're pulling it, ching, 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 stop. And you can boom, pull it hard and gonna go down. I like to strip it, strip, 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 and go, and I like to stop, and I like to pull it hard so it goes a little bit underwater and let it go and pops up again and a trout goes, bam, usually, <laughs> not always, but usually. So there's my caddis fly, and thanks for watching. If you like my videos, please hit the like button, and uh, I'm gonna upload more videos. I, I'm, I got this big list, and people are asking me, Ivan, can you tie this and this and. As I, I haven't told you, but I, I'm not so good at the classics, you know, uh, March Brown and all those types of flies. So we'll see. I, I'm going to upload the flies I use myself first, and and then we can we can go on the classics and wet flies and everything. But um, then I have to actually tie them and learn them because I don't tie a lot of classic uh, wet flies. So, but uh, I can learn them and I can show you. So. Yeah, so that there you go. That's the caddis, and um, I see you in my ne next episode. So thank you. Bye.